climate and biodiversity crises are human problems. Our actions brought them about. We must consume less. Go home and say to everyone, we must consume less. Tell your friends and tell them that the less we consume, the more we become humans. Today, modern society is built on rampant materialism and consumerism, and it's destroying our world. The biggest problem with consumerism is the fact that people don't realize it's a problem. Humans are clearly capable of incredible intelligence and creativity. But our thinking is also flawed in ways that directly contributes to climate inaction. These crises are big problems with impacts that are felt gradually rather than immediately. But our minds are adapted for dealing with the local and the here and now. We are constantly being bombarded with marketing messages that persuade and reassure us that the endless consumption of things is the route to our happiness and our joy. Ireland is one of the six top countries in the world that has the highest consumer rate of any population in the world. We are buying things, throwing them away, wasting them. It takes a huge amount of materials and energy and water to manufacture these items. And then that stuff has to get transported across the world just to get into our homes. So even when we buy things online, we're making a big impact on the environment globally. If we continue in this way, the desire and demand for goods increases and the need to produce these goods increases, ultimately accelerating climate change. We need to reject this orgy of consumption and find joy in not shopping at all. When we consider climate change, we look at different sectors of our economy. We look at agriculture, we look at energy generation and usage. We also look at transport. Transport accounts for about 20% of our overall emissions profile in Ireland. It's the area that's growing the fastest. It's the area that's been the most stubborn to reduce. The thing about transport is it's something that we all do. And the solution to reducing our emissions profile in this area is something that we're all responsible for. Dublin is one of the most congested cities in Europe. Many people think of roads as places where cars move. Actually, roads are public space that can be allocated to widening of footpaths, to segregated cycling, to green the city, as play streets for children, or as places for people and for wildlife. We need to change our energy habits. That's what's at the root of this. I know people's lives are busy, and that's why we develop habits over decades in order to help us navigate these busy lives. But the habits that we have developed with respect to energy consumption are not sustainable. We need to think and pay more attention to the energy that we use every day and more importantly, try and waste less of it. We need to talk about nature. Throughout human history, uh, we've tried to control nature. We've cleared it, we've homogenized it. Um, we've intensively managed it so that now hu humans have significantly altered three quarters, 75% of the Earth's surface. 85% of wetlands worldwide are gone. Species are being pushed to their limits and going extinct. And the destruction of nature has brought us disease as we're all far too aware at the moment. COVID-19 is climate change. It's a symptom of a bigger problem. COVID-19 is a zoonosis, a virus that jumps from animals to humans. And these zoonotic events are more likely to happen in a population that rises from one and a half billion 100 years ago to seven and a half billion today. And with that rise comes other changes. Our demand for meat has tripled in the last 50 years, which encourages the farming of intensively and genetically homogenous animals where disease can spread fast. 
we've encroached increasingly in wildlife habitats through the normalization of our supply chains and our travel. And these are encouraging contacts at what the UN call the Human Livestock Wildlife Ecosystem Interface. To drive individual change, it's our systems and institutions that need to change. We don't normally worry about trafficking of pangolin meat and merchandise till they have a role in a pandemic. And the pandemic affects some people more than the others, as we know. This is true for the slow and unequal violence of climate change as well. Accumulation of capital, formation of nation states, colonial encounters and wars led to ecological change, which contributes to respiratory diseases and increase in the price of meat today. The impact would be greater in places that have low air quality or inflated food prices. 50% of all anthropogenically produced greenhouse gases were produced in the last 25 years. Part of what some scientists refer to as the Great Acceleration increasing climate change, biodiversity loss, uh, ocean acidification. We may even be facing what some people refer to as climate departure, where there isn't a regular climate cycle. In order for us to survive as a species, we need to ensure that wildlife survives. We are part of the food web and we are intrinsically involved with our natural world. The ocean is the last line of defense against climate change. Three things today. One, it has taken up more than 30% of all the CO2 we have produced. Two, its top 10 meters hold as much heat as the whole atmosphere. Three, it has produced more than 50% of the oxygen we're breathing. But, three more things. One, it is warming. This reduces the amount of CO2 it can take up tomorrow. Two, it's becoming more acidic. This affects oxygen producing algae and the amount of CO2 it can take up tomorrow. Thirdly, it's losing oxygen fast. It is dying. It's sending us an SOS. We need to stop greenwashing and playing lip service. On a moral level, we have an obligation to ensure all these species are allowed to live out their lives. Environmental ethicists and activists have called the climate and biodiversity crises of our present moment a wicked problem. Wicked problems are truly wicked because they're not easily solvable. But they have another effect in that they overwhelm our sense of moral agency such that we feel that we're alone and can't do anything to contribute to meaningful change. We need to weave concern for climate and for biodiversity into our social identities so that making sustainable choices becomes part of what it means to be a parent, uh, a GAA supporter, a dub, an educator or a student. And right now we have an opportunity to kickstart that process by putting climate action and ecosystem regeneration at the centre of a Trinity identity. At the end of the 18th century, the great German philosopher Immanuel Kant threw down the gauntlet to his contemporaries. Sapere aude, he said, dare to know. Daring to know is what universities are all about. Daring to know about our own present is the only way we can take responsibility for the future of our students. The university in the present moment is poised to make an intervention here, poised to think about how we empower students and society and to think in sensitive and just ways about our emotional feelings about the environment around us. 
We need lawyers who are well versed in the nuances of environmental legislation. We need doctors and nurses who are vocal about the healing power of nature and are willing to prescribe time spent in the outdoors as commonly as they would medication. We need social workers who will advocate for community gardening as a tool for building social cohesion. We need politicians and economists who are brave enough to look beyond their four-year term and instead use their knowledge of ecological thinking to impact the trajectory of future policy today. More than anything, we need lecturers who are willing to distill these values down through all of Trinity's departments. We need to stop daydreaming about a time machine that will allow us to change the past. And instead, imagine how a single hour-long lecture can change the future by planting a seed of thought in a single student's mind. If we fail to face up to what it is we know and to the responsibility that flows from that knowledge, then in a fundamental respect, we fail to be a university.